This is part of uh, a series of videos on LC3 programming. I It's actually uh, part two of my, uh, my video on data structures and abstract data types. So let's take a look at an other abstract data type, which is a queue. Again, remember that an abstract data type is entirely determined or described by the operations we perform. So our abstract data type queue, which is also a first in, first out mechanism, which means that the first element I put in is the first element that's going to come out of my out of my uh, out of my box if you will so so the operations we're going to perform are going to be nq and dq and are we're gonna have some sort of a queue in it to initialize our queue specifically our queue in it function is going to take a single input r naught which will set the capacity of our queue uh, the nq function will take a single element r naught will hold the element that we want nq and it returns in register R5, it's going to return whether it's a success or a failure. And we're going to use the, use the indicators of success to be a 1 and failure to be a 0. We're going to use a DQ operation, which is going to get no inputs, but it returns two outputs. It returns in R0 the element dequeued and in R5 the success or failure. Again, success is 1, failure is 0. So let's take a look at our implementation of this structure. But before we kind of get to actual code actual initialization itself uh, which is prop which is our queue in it I want to uh, spend some time here's the initialization code but I want to spend some time looking at how the queue itself is organized and uh, stored in memory so the queue for us is going to be a region of memory in our case we're going to define the queue to be some location uh, I'm going to just for now just give it and give it a name called queue is the address of that location wherever that is and we'll initially set it to some 20 elements except in my q in it i'm actually going to take that and set it to whatever the capacity is so for now let's say the capacity that we have is five so let's take an example of a five element q which is one two three one two three four five element q that's five elements in my q five positions in my queue. At any point in time, I'm going to uh, see that I can add elements to the queue. The way, the way I'm gonna add elements to my queue is I'm gonna keep track of some state. So what is what are the things that I keep track of? Remember in, when we worked on a stack, we just keep, kept track of, track of the top of the stack because the, that is the only thing we needed. For a queue, we'll need two important things to keep track of. The two important things we're going to keep track of are the head and the tail. So this is the front of the queue, if you will, and this is the back of the queue. So initially, both front and back are simply pointing to the very beginning. That's what we're going to do initially. But as we add items, let's say we added an item. So if we add one item into our queue, then, then we will, we've, our queue is going to grow by size and the size is incremented, size is initially equal to zero. And when I, 
when I add an item, that will become a one. So let's just add one item to our queue and see what happens. Um, the rest of this is just setting everything up. And I'm doing a little trick here where, um, where I'm going to uh, mark the end of my queue, the memory address of my end of my queue, which is queue end, and the memory address of the start of my queue, which is queue start, are just two two variables in my in my code and the way I set Q end and Q capacity is I actually store in memory the negatives of those so that eventually when I have to do a comparison I can do an easy comparison because I already stored in memory the negative of the capacity and the negative of the the end location because I'm going to check whether I reach the end of my queue. So let's let's go through the motions and see what one of the key considerations one have to one has to do when working with a queue. So so say we added five elements to the queue. So we added let's say a uh, uh, a five a seven a two a three and uh, uh, an a if you will doesn't matter what those are because our queue as we saw uh, our example that we're going to do is is simply going to take a character as our input so it doesn't matter what character i give so let's say that's what i did so at this point the front of the queue is there but my rear of my queue is going to point right there so the front is there and the and the back is there or the tail i'm calling them the front head and the tail so that's our head and that's our so what would happen at this point say I removed one from the queue if I remove one from the queue then this item is no longer available so the queue head is gonna go there the head goes there and the tail goes there in some sense at this point we could say that I have room in the queue because this this for all practical purposes is not available anymore it's not it's there but it can't be accessed because the next one i dq is going to be this one so so should i be able to add an item at this point the answer is yes because there's room for it but the way i have to add is i have to add it in this location so the key step we'll be looking at is we will do what is called a wrap around and this wrap around uh, has a has almost a connotation of looking at our our queue as if it is what we call as a circular queue. That is, as I add items, the next location I'm going to be adding is not here, but it is there. So one way to look at that is think of it as a circular location. So this is the front of the queue initially. Um, this is, let's say, the start of the queue. And if you have five locations, that's one, um, that's a zero, one, two so it's one two three four and five locations let's say and they're not evenly distributed but you get the idea this is a start and that's the end i'm keeping track of the start and the end so as i'm adding elements um, i'm gonna keep track of what is my head of my queue so right now i have a five here a seven here a two here three here and an A here and the head is pointing to this and the tail is pointing to that. Now if I remove an item then the head is going to be updated to point here and I should be able to add an item. So now what happens is when I add to the tail I'm actually adding to the next location which is what the wrap around is about. So the key step here is when I wrap around I will start adding at the next location. So whenever my, my um, tail of my queue points to the end, I will check to see if, if I know that there is room, and I do that by looking at this capacity, whether I reach the capacity. If I, did, if I know there's a room, then what I'll do is I'll not go here, I will go to the beginning. And that's the step we want to perform. So the rest of the code should be pretty straightforward not, now that we understand this notion of wraparound. So here's our uh, initialization. Uh, let's take a look at our NQ, NQ mechanism, which is this one, which is our NQ mechanism uh, for our Q. And the NQ mechanism, as I said, is looking at our 
looking at our data like we said before this is the start of the queue I'm going to put an S for the start this is the end of our queue and what we what we have is a size of our queue so we're always going to first check and see if the size is equal to the capacity if the size is equal to the capacity as I go in then I reach the if it's yes then I reached it's it's full so I'm going to get out with an r5 equals 0 so I've set r5 equals 0 to start with which is the step here now if it is not then I add add to q with wrap around consideration and the consideration of of wrap around and then I finish that and I set r5 equal to 1 and then I get out that way so what is the wrap around consideration all you will see, what you will see is uh, right off the bat if I this is the part where I am checking uh, if if I, I if I reach the end so I'm gonna get that end pointer and I'm going to compare it against my ta the tail right now and if they're equal then I will um, I will go to this wrap up wrap around on NQ where I'm going to start I'm going to load into R1 R1 being my location where I will be um, uh, where the tail is going to be right now and I'm going to set that to be equal to whatever the start is and then I'm going to store that into the tail now if I don't have a wrap around then it's pretty straightforward I simply um, up, uh, set r1 to be one more than its previous value so tail assign the value tail plus one that's what this one does and then I update the tail right here which is store it to the location tail and what I'm also doing is I'm incrementing the size every time I add an element we increment on successful add successful nq so that part should be straight so the only only tricky part is the wrap around and the wrap around is entirely done by checking if I reach the end of the queue and if I reach the end of my of my storage then I'm gonna wrap around and I wrap around by simply loading the s value start value which is load the start value right there and then I store it into my queue tail so my queue tail now will have that particular value and here is our DQ operation. Our DQ operation is has to account for a DQ operation has to account for an empty queue. So it's the success or failure is because it fails because I have an empty queue. So again the code is pretty straightforward we we have to again look at the wraparound uh, situation so we're looking at the wrap, wrap, wraparound situation so when do we get the wraparound situation on a on a queue um, that when we uh, as we remove an element so we are removing an element so think about what may have happened in our system is we have um, we have added items to our uh, to our uh, system and uh, right now uh, let's just take an hypothetical scenario we have four five items in our in our system and um, and after repeated adds adds and deletes uh, let's say I have a DQ operation I performed so my my uh, the head is actually pointing to this location and right now it might be as simple as the head is pointing there and the the tail which is the last item I um, that if I were to add an item then I'd be adding let's say as extreme case is the tail is pointing there so I have an uh, item 5 here that has been that is at the at the head and the tail has a value of let's say a, a value of 3 Right? it's pointing to a value so this is a size of 
equals 2. So right now I'm going to go in and I see that it's not empty. So I, uh, if it were empty, I would just go off to the empty spot here. But if it's not empty, I'm going to grab the head, which is the Q head, which is that guy. And I'm going to check, I'm going to load what is at the head of the Q, which happens to be the number 5. So R0 gets the number 5, which is what this step does. And then I'm going to check if, if R2, uh, so I'm going to, into R2, I'm going to store the end, which is the end is here and the start is here. I'll load it and I'll check if, if, check and see if R2, um, uh, if, if R1, which is in our case, uh, um, I'll add, I'll add the, the um, Q head with the Q end. And end, remember, we, we intentionally stored it as a negative number. So we're going to check and see if if we reach the end. Um, so the end actually is right here. So we've reached the end. If we reach the end, then what we need to do is to update our, our queue. So we're going to update our queue by by applying the right operation, which is if it's if we add the two and if it's equal to zero, then we have a wrap around. So we go to the wrap around step, which is here. If it is not, we just increment it by one and we do a head update, which is this step. So if I reach the end, then my head is no longer going to be pointing here. This one, the head should now be pointing there. So the next item I will remove from will be at that location and right now our, you could say actually the size is not equal to 2 in this case um, there were items here as well because that's the tail that's 4 let's say A and C and so the tail tail is this which is the end last item I added and the head is right there so I move to the head to be that point and actually the size in this case was 5 because they are right next to each other. So let's look at an actual use of, uh, of uh, Q. Here is some code for doing it um, rather than walk you through the code in, um, in on, uh, on my screen capture. I'm going to uh, do this in uh, in an actual simulator. So here's the simulator um, running our code. Um, and so let's assemble it. We're going to run this, run this right now. And uh, let's go ahead and see how the code works first. Uh, and then we will walk through and show you what's happening. So uh, it's similar to the stack example. I'm going to add a number. Uh, let's say I add an A to my stack, uh, to my queue. I add another 2 to my queue. I add a C to my queue. Um, let's delete one item or remove, dequeue an item. If I dequeue, I get an A because A was the first item I put in. The first item that I put in is the first item that came out. If I do another minus, I get the 2 out of the queue. Let's add a couple of items. Uh, let's do a plus 4. Uh, plus D plus 9 and let's do another extra plus uh, which is a 4 um, and the last plus which should fail which is a 3 so the last one failed because I reached the capacity of 5 in this case which I set in my code so now if I start to delete them uh, or DQ them, I should DQ the oldest element, which is C, which was up here, which is never DQ'd. And then I can DQ more elements. And if I DQ another element and another element and another element, at this point, I've DQ'd all my elements that I put in my, um, actually there's um, a couple of more elements. So I DQ that element and another element. And now my queue is empty because there's no more elements left. So it prints a message. So the code itself should be pretty straightforward. Um, what you will notice is it follows the same um, uh, same test example as the as a stack. The only difference being that I have a message that says NQ and Q uh, failed rather than stack uh, push and pop failed.
but other than that the code is almost identical the distinctions are in where I call my initialization so this is my initialization of the queue right there this is the call to my NQ right here and a call to my DQ which is right here if the input happens to be a plus then I'll do a NQ if the input is a minus then I'll do a DQ um, other than that the code is pretty straightforward